Nokia is at it again. It's placing big bets on the Lumia 920 as an exclusive on AT&T for just 99 bucks, the new two-year contract. Is the company's latest Windows Phone device a large improvement over its previous efforts? Can it woo more customers to Microsoft's budding platform? Let's go ahead and check it out and see for ourselves. The Lumia 920 no doubt packs a bit of heft at 185 grams and a thickness of 10.7 millimeters, but it's a far cry from the complaints several pundits have already issued. In fact, I think its bulk actually makes it feel rock solid, like the Nokia phones we all remember from back in the day that could play Snake and really take a beating. I'm absolutely positively in love with the high gloss cherry red polycarbonate body too. And that's what I love about what Nokia and HTC are doing with Windows Phone 8, bringing color back to the smartphone game. The phone has a large 4.5 inch screen, the 1280 by 768 pixel resolution, and thanks to its pure motion HD technology, I found it to offer more accurate colors, deeper, inkier blacks than the Windows Phone 8X from HTC. I prefer looking at the Lumia 920 screen in every situation, whether it was watching movies, outside, or indoors. Viewing angles were also great, and the screen was easily viewable outdoors under direct sunlight. The Lumia 920 also features wireless charging for its 2000 mAh battery, which I'll talk about a bit later. It's got a dual core Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 processor, support for AT&T's 4G LTE network, rocking one gigabyte of RAM, 32 gigs of storage, twice that of what the 8X offers, Bluetooth 3.0, NFC, and all kinds of other goodness. What you're not going to find though is Beats Audio, which I really liked on the Windows Phone 8X, but I prefer the industrial design, the display, and Nokia software bundles over the Windows Phone 8X so far. Speaking of software, let's go ahead and dive right into that. We talked about Windows Phone 8 a great deal in our HTC 8X review, since it was the first smartphone that we'd reviewed running the new operating system. So we'll spare you the basics about NFC support, sizable start screen tiles, and other features. Instead, I'll talk about what Nokia has included that makes the Lumia 920 stand out against other devices. If you want to see the 8X review though, we'll have a link down below. First, the Finnish phone maker included its own drive, maps, music, and city viewfinder on the Lumia 920. All add value and are completely free with the phone. Drive works really well for turn-by-turn -turn voice guided navigation. For example, you can even save maps for offline use when a cell signal is just not available. Nokia Music is a surprisingly pretty solid store for shopping for songs, even for finding out about local concerts in your area. City View is a really cool augmented reality application in concept, but it's not really that useful yet. It works, don't get me wrong. It correctly showed me all the nearby coffee shops, but you don't want to just go stumbling down the street using it as a viewfinder. I'm not sure how much it can be improved though, it's just not that useful seeing a bunch of floating icons on the screen where I can easily use maps and find a point of interest much quicker. The application selection for Windows Phone 8 is still a major weak point, especially against iOS and Android. Microsoft could take the stage and show off live tiles all at once, but if you can't do anything with Windows Phone, it becomes a pretty boring experience. The great apps just aren't there yet folks, but Microsoft has promised 45 to 50 of the top apps from other app stores. Unfortunately, it's still playing a huge game of catch up, especially considering Pandora, which has already been available on other mobile platforms forever, is a highlight on that list. Look, you'll buy a Windows Phone 8 device because of the great hardware, which Lumia 920 absolutely offers, and the excellent user experience. But you'll want to look elsewhere if you're an app junkie. This is not a shot directly at the Lumia 920, I just want you to know that Windows Phone 8 itself is really lacking in that area. So let's talk about the camera. The Lumia 920 offers an 8.7 megapixel camera with a Carl Zeiss lens and the company's PureView technology that was first introduced in the PureView 808. Images are crisp, colorful, and accurate in pretty much every scenario. The low light performance is like magic, but it didn't always produce awesome results. I held the phone several times in super dim conditions where most phones wouldn't take a great shot and I snapped a photo. Suddenly the screen lit up after being completely dark with a bright image, as if it hadn't been shot in a dark environment at all. When I compared it to low light images to those shot with my iPhone 5, arguably the best smartphone camera on the market though, I found that the iPhone's shots were a bit sharper, less blurry than those with the 920, which I really wasn't expecting. That is especially true if there were any lights in the image, such as those on my keyboard. The iPhone 5 snapped a photo that looks just fine, but the lights send a massive glow into the Lumia 920 shots. The front facing camera is okay, it's got a resolution of 1280 by 960 but it doesn't blow my pants off. Don't make any jokes. Next, let's talk about wireless charging. AT&T is going to include a free wireless charging plate with the Lumia 920 while all supplies last. It's a pretty awesome feature that I really liked using. I was able to come home, take the Lumia 920 out of my pockets, just drop it on the wireless charger on my coffee table. I didn't have to fiddle with wires or anything like that. It kind of seems trivial and a little bit silly, but I really found it enjoyable. The phone makes a sound when you drop it on the pad to let you know it's charging, and there's an LED indicator that lets you know when it's finished charging. From what I could distinguish, though, it doesn't take longer to charge Lumia 920 on the pad than it does plugging it in directly. It seems it just takes a few hours to get a full charge. Charging plates will be available in all the colors of the Lumia, including black, cyan, red, white, and yellow. There's also a Nokia wireless charging pillow by Fatboy. We didn't have a chance to test that guy out. Probably because he ate it. Alright, next let's talk about battery life, data, and call quality. 
Lumia 9 20 packs a 2000 milliamp hour battery that's rated for up to 9 hours of talk time over 3G. I was able to easily get through a full day without having to drop it on the wireless charging pad once, and that's become my benchmark for most smartphones these days. Several times I woke up with it next to me with a full charge, but I mostly kept it on its charging pad since it was just easy to cruise by, toss it out of my pocket, and walk out the door. Data speeds were really solid on AT&T's 4G LTE network, and I was able to download full albums on the Xbox Music Store in just a few minutes while I was walking to the coffee shop. Obviously though, it's going to depend on your location. I used the Lumia 920 as my primary phone for a few days and didn't experience really any drop calls. Everything sounded perfectly clear, speaker was adequate, especially during a techno buffalo conference call. Everybody could hear me yelling at him clearly. So what's the verdict on the Lumia 920? I'm really going to miss it when I have to send it back. To me, Nokia really has hit the nail on the head with the style of software and hardware. The cherry red color really made it stand out in my memory against any other phone I've tested recently, and it's leaps and bounds ahead of the Lumia 900. It's so excellent that all the complaints about the heft have me baffled, but I suppose there's always something to call out in a smartphone. Windows Phone 8 does need work, it still doesn't have as many applications as Android and iOS, but that's okay. It's a fledging platform, just needs time to grow. And frankly, I'm judging Lumia 920 for what it is. A Windows Phone 8 built on great hardware. The camera's wonderful, even if the close-up shots make it look a bit blurry. I still prefer my iPhone 5 for most camera situations. So that brings me down to the hard question I need to answer. Is the Lumia 920 better than the Windows Phone 8X by HTC? Yeah, I think so. The 920 is $100 cheaper, offers compatible hardware, a better camera, comes preloaded with Nokia's excellent applications. Plus, you get wireless charging for free. To me, that's a no-brainer. But if you prefer a skinnier phone with a completely different design, the Windows Phone 8X is going to be an amazing alternative. So if you've been considering a new phone, the Lumia 920 is going to serve you very well for the next two years. It's a great phone with awesome build quality on a really intriguing operating system. What do you guys think? Is the 920 going to grace your pockets for the next two years? We want to hear what you have to say. Check us out at technobuffalo.com for the latest and greatest tech news. I'm John Rettinger. See you in the next video.